What are you doing? Yeah, noisy little bugger. You went for food. Off, off your mother. Hmm. You're an ugly little git, I'll tell you that. The Royal Horticultural Society have said we are in crisis. The industry is lacking youngsters coming through. This is Eggleston Hall Gardens and over the next 12 months we're going to take you on a journey of what it's like to run a nursery garden. It's week 29 and I'm just having a Bit of a go at these tomatoes. I'm sure uh, you know what we do with tomatoes as far as taking out the side shoots. Go. Yeah. We're just tying them in a bit. You can see in that leaf axle there, there's a side shoot. They're naturally bush plants and they want to bush out. So we're just tying them in a little bit more. I quite like the smell of tomatoes. The foliage has a very distinct smell, but it can make your fingers very, very dirty. So yeah, we'll just uh, leave these. These are an old heritage variety. Of, well, this one's gigantic. But this is a variety called Bloody Butcher. And it's a very red tomato, inside and out. But uh, if we don't, you can see here, you can look there, there's the, the main stem of the tomato. There's a little side shoot at the top there. Well, we don't want that. They grow out of the leaf axles. Because they're a bush plant, they want to make lots of growing heads. And there's one that, because I haven't been careful and looking at them, look at that size of that. Don't want that bugger. Um, and then we just tie, tie it in. There's no more to it. But as I say, it's week 29 and uh, we're looking forward to showing you some more um, of the things that we're doing this time of the year. It's a very busy time. Um, we've got so much to do. Propagation has to be done. A lot of that is the same. And... Uh, the borders have to be looked after. There's a lot of um, mid to late flowering plants like campanulas coming in, which you'll see as the video progresses. Uh, Thomas has been doing a few things. Elizabeth and Clara have been doing a few things. So let's hope you enjoy it. These broad beans are quite interesting. They're a dwarf one, but the ones in the middle have got drawn up a bit. What I'm going to do now is take these growing points out. We should have done it a while ago, really. In some parts of the world, they actually eat these um, young shoots. I'm taking them off because I want them to um, concentrate on fattening the pods further down. But another thing that they... And they, they, they do get 
black fly. So if there's black fly about, they always go for the young growth at the end. Um, I haven't got it at the moment, but we'll just get rid of it just to avoid the possibility. In the other parts of the world again, they actually eat the pods this size, about finger size. And uh, they actually use pod and bean and just chop it up into half inch pieces. But we tend to leave them and grow them into fat beans and use the, uh, the actual seed or bean itself. It's quite interesting how different cultures use the same food in different ways. The red and beans are uh, flowering, you can see that one's red. Moonlight is white. And this one, Celebration, is pink. Although I'd be more inclined to call it orangey. Orangey, uh, what would you call that colour? Salmon? No. I'm not sure. No matter. My God, Elizabeth, you've got very thin. Oh, it's a broomstick. Go on, Elizabeth, what are you up to? I'm cleaning up some strontias. It's bloody... What's it even called, the stuff? Uh, liverwort. Liverwort, that's it. My brain's not working. Um, you can't clean it off every pot, but it was looking a bit ridiculous in these, so... Um, yeah. It if you did it in every pot, you'd be on all, all year. Um, but these were a bit bad actually. So just I'm try just... and keep keep on top of it. It's just the water. Yeah. In the damp. It doesn't matter. Some of the things. There's not as much, but it was a bit swampy. This. Yeah. Um. So I'm just cleaning them from putting some fresh on top. The which lovely is strontia. Which one is it? It's snow, oh, snow star. star. Oh, it looks like it needs potting on to me. Mm -hmm. oh, it doesn't, does it? I don't know. It's a bit disappointing. Yeah, they've got a lot of leaf, haven't they? Um, yeah, I'm chopping up. These begonias look nice. I do. I'm never sure of them. Have you found anything decent to put in here yet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, EC Buxton, people have been admiring these. Oh, they are nice. Um, Artemisia. No. Is it? Not uh, um, uh, Artemis. Sorry, yeah. Um, they're coming out, they're going to come out. So these have gone a bit over. They? It's just what they do, I think, isn't it, in a way? They, they do, they look, like, they look really straggly arsed. They look all right in the middle of a border. Yeah, they look all right in that. Like and, a lot of things. And if you cut them back after flowering, they tend to do okay. Oh, is that? I had a little black better yesterday. This is a, an interesting, um, uh, interesting aster. I had it at Plantsman's Corner and grows about six somewhere between six to eight feet it was given to me by uh the late michael wickenden um you wouldn't usually stake it it just had a battering with the wind oh yeah and and you know you're growing it in little pots you know it's... all the asters are looking good actually uh, florus Fo folius sorry not florus it's funny one it gets covered in flower this one, yeah, we'll have to look at this when it is actually in flower. It's a really peculiar leaf for an aster. And those bloody ridiculously expensive under license, what are they called? Uh, Peruvian lilies. Oh. Astromerias. Astromerias, yeah, they've come into flower. They look quite nice this year. He's going to show people that funny leaf. I think I've done that before. The fact that it's all upside down. Yeah. Yeah, every leaf's upside down. I think I've probably repeated that about four times. Then there's a nice Alstomeria next to them. Yeah, now that is nice. Is then that's Royal that's Star or something, isn't it? Yeah. A lot smaller flower. Yeah, but on a nice head of yeah. foliage. What is it called? Royal Star. It is Royal Star, isn't it? Yeah, and it grows a couple of foot. And don't look behind you because there's hundreds of astilbees. 
Oh, fucking hell. And oh, there's more of them over there. The bastards are breeding. Right. They so finished filming perennials now. So I've actually got something interesting to show you. Have you? Make a change. Hello there. And welcome back to another edition of His Nibs. And so what I'm on with here, getting some nibs of, is the Oxide Daisy, Leucanthemum vulgare. Just a lovely little wildflower, but it is a really nice, really pretty, and quite underestimated flower, really, because it'll grow in so many different places and just spreads itself about and looks after itself. So what we're doing here is just these young plants that were cut back a couple of weeks ago, and they're just starting to shoot away nicely with some new growth. And you can apply this same sort of thing to normal leucanthemum as well. So what I'm doing is just powering down the majority of the roots and what you've got to look for is just the best place to cut it where you're going to get the most uh, amount of growth because a lot of them are starting to send up new buds along the old stems. What I do, I tend to try and make an incision with my secateurs and then pull it apart just because unless you have a very sharp knife there you go I can pull just little bits off like that and I'll do that across the entire plant and now where I can I'll try and part it with my fingers you don't need a lot you just need a little bit of root with them and they will shoot away nicely yep. and just once you've got them separated and it's important not to leave them lying about too long so then I'll just get them going straight in a pot. Doesn't matter about the presentation on top because at the end of the day we're only bothered about the stuff below the surface because these will be our plant for next year. And with these, because they're such a vigorous and tough plant, I'm not too bothered about re reducing the foliage too much because they have enough root and they should be able to look after themselves really. Again, just tidy up. Where you've got some old corky bits like that, that's just a lump of old stem that's going to be no benefit to the plant at all. Again, just get bossed in there. And hopefully, from these dozen or so, I'll hopefully be able to get about 60 or so plants that will keep us going for another year. Right, and now I've got some Veronica Gentinoides. This is another nice spring flower in Veronica, and it is really quite a fantastic thing. Is this one of them? Just sort of finishing flowering, but that's a sort of you get a lovely spike of that in about March, April time. It is a really lovely thing, and I'm just wanting to bulk these up again. And because it flowers quite early, we only ever want them in small pots, really. Wouldn't want them to go into any bigger. So I'm just gonna tidy these up and then I'll split them down it's the sort of thing it does it sort of runs this one as well so we'd like to keep it in small pot for it to look really dense because when you plant it in the border it just sort of runs away not invasively but it just spreads up quite nicely in the front of your border and what I'll do with this one is to make a start on it Let's split it down the middle there Again, get rid of a load of this root and just make it a bit easier for myself because all you need to do with this one literally just as easy as that, just parting it there. And then, once I just get this tidied up, that's the sort of thing, I will just pot up one of them individually and then just go through the entire thing. I prefer, even if some of these I'm going to pot them up like two in the same pot, I still quite like to split them just so it gives them a bit more vigour because then they lose that old corkiness that they have and it just makes them, because obviously when you split them like that the plant ends up acting like one individual plant so it has to look after itself then so just again there and get rid of that stuff sometimes if they feel a bit dense just need to split them, but again, this one looks like it'll come apart easily enough. Just 
move a little bit, pull it apart, and there we go. Here's another one. And again, I'm just going to tidy them up like this, as you can see with this tray I've already done. I'm not bothering to cut any of the leaves in half or any of that stuff. I'm not a great believer in just cutting the leaf in half. I think you either remove it completely or just leave it as it is. Because it's not exactly as if with these I'm leaving them with no root at all. Let's get rid of some of that old stuff. And again, you see there how it just sort of falls apart nicely, but that one, I won't pot that up by itself, so I'll just stick these in the pot like that, just trim any of the long roots back. And just like that, and this will just give this plant plenty of time to get itself rooted in, ready for it flowering in spring. There we go. Alright, so what we've got here, it's a Lamium, a Lamium Arvala, but it's not like the typical dead nettles that we have that are like a little ground cover plant. This is just a really nice upright herbaceous form. It keeps itself to itself and it really does have quite an attractive flower. I think we had it for the first time a couple of years ago now, and this is one of the original plants. And I divided one last year, because we weren't sure how it would work with it being, like I say, not a little ground cover one, because it doesn't run. But it actually proved to work quite well. So what I do, I did last year, I sort of cut it back to the lowest pair of leaves just to leave it with a bit of something for when I divide it and it just makes it a bit easier for me seeing where I'm working because I take my time with this one because it's quite important to get a few of this because this is one of Lisa's own plants so there's quite a bit of pressure on for me not to make a cock up but what I did last time I just Take a load off the bottom if I can. Just to make things a bit easier. You go and I sort of look for where I think there's a good gap to stick the knife in. I do this, I use the knife as well for precision when I'm trying to make nip like this. It's no good me trying to mess on with a machete because I'd just be quite disastrous. You can just part it gently there and now I've made the cut. There we go. There's actually a little bit that split itself off there. Now I realise it really doesn't look like a lot, but actually uh, when I did little bits like that last year, it actually came back to work. And then I'll just show you for this half, sort of what I did. I more or less split down to get each individual stem. And I mean, we I tried cuttings of it as well last year while I was on with it, they didn't work, but it is hollow stemmed. So I wasn't exactly surprised, but just for the sake of seeing how it works. I'll leave with this one actually because I can see a nice cut down. There we go. Does that nice bit come off? rip all those bits off you can see there once I've got rid of a lot more of this old root that isn't going to be any use to it. You can see there how that's going to just form a nice individual plant because obviously they won't do a lot this year they just sit dormant they don't actually appear to put on any growth they just root and come back in the spring because I'm pretty confident in these working now that I've done it once 
Now I've actually been and got my little sharp knife, so it's just a bit more precise. I am actually going to try and take this into two. And what you need to do, I just, I just like to scrape away, because you can feel there, there's like a... There's a solid bit where these two join. And what you normally find is both of them have come up either side of where an old flowering piece from last year was. So what I'm going to try to do, and pray I don't mess this up on camera, is slice it right down the middle there. I say you need something pretty sharp for doing this, and the scalpel will be no good because it'll be too fragile. And just ease that apart. And there we go. Again, it's pretty impressive you see how big and fleshy those roots are on this plant, but I simply don't need them. So I'll just cut them off. And just like so. I mean, I'll, I'll leave that pair of roots to give it a hand, but as I said last year, they just sat dormant all winter and they came and shot away again in spring. And we'll just go now and have a look at the ones from last year. Cut. So now I've got just this little, almost full tray of them here now. Just to give them the water in. It's important not to let them, because even if they're in compost, it does not take long for them to dry out. So, as you can see there from that one plant, I got 16. That's obviously assuming they all take, which with something like that I'm never as confident with, whereas like, with the Veronica Gentinoides, I'm pretty confident that they'll all work. I'm just in this. And then I'll just water these in, I'll fill up my barrel with other nibs and then I'll take them up to the pot. These were the divisions that I did last year. I mean that's the difference, that's, look at that, how different that flower is. Really lovely Do you thing. really like that? I like that flower, yeah. I mean for Pete's sake it's a lamium and it's nice. What do you think it looks like, is it? Not I've already like said what I think it looks head. like last, last week. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that. Oh, uh, yeah. So these are the ones that, uh, again, I did this time last year. And that's what they're coming on to look like. Obviously, what? they're flowering at the wrong time of year, but. What kind family of is that? Uh, Lamiaceae. Yeah. Isn't, yeah. It, isn't it? Uh, and look at that end one. Yeah. I think it's quite nice. The Lamium, it keeps itself to itself. And I think that's really nice. Oh, look at that. And you pull the hood back. Here we go. I think it's 7.30 this morning. Lisa was unpacking all of these lovely plants from Kenway's. It's got lovely, lots of lovely perennials. And I'm just potting up the anemones into three litre pots. A lot of potting up today. Do you are convinced that, or is it a case that you've just got carried away with your clipping, Malcolm? I don't know, I don't know. I just thought it would be three boxes, not all of these. One year I, um... Instead of ordering one tray of fennel plants, I ordered, I think it was ten or was it parsley? Or oh one? dear. Well, it's very easily done, but this delivery has just come from Barrett's Bridge. And I don't exactly know what Malcolm ordered, but. Well, a lot of it's rosemary and a lot of it's lavender, young lavender plants. And we need to be growing our own on. Everybody wants lavender and rosemary though know, in their garden. Because of the garden centres can't get it from Holland as much now because of Xylella. Because it's a, it's a host of Xylella. Xylella fastidiosa. Okay. Yeah. Seven boxes instead of three. God knows what I've done here. Well, who's clever babies then? You've not found your wings yet.
<laughs> you found your voice. You found that for ages ago. You noisy little bastard. So these are the young plants that we are going to be growing on. Nice rooted cuttings. This is uh, a rosemary, Mrs. Jessup's. There's quite a lot of that. Some lavenders, uh, Loden Pink. Oh, they're not, uh, they're too brilliant. Uh, Loden Pink, Ashdown Forest. Very good, strong growing stuff. These little saxifrages are quite impressive. Look at that, this is one called Winifred Bevington. That's almost a finished plant. White Hill, another little saxifrage. Beautiful little thing. Excellent, excellent. You see, when we work with good, with people that produce good quality young stock, you know, it, it makes life so much easier. And we cannot do anything now, and, and, sorry, not anything, everything, because of the, we're quite popular and we are, um, and it's just impossible. We run out of stuff. I was not expecting to be so busy this year. Um, it's just, just, I can't, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, and certain things like uh, what bedding plants we had, we sold out of in three to four weeks. Lavenders, well, we haven't got a lavender on the place hardly. And rosemaries, well, could have sold any amount of them. Well done, Soph. You've virtually filled the tunnel up. Yep. How many thousand do you reckon are there then? I can't remember. <laughs> How many thousand do you do a day? Thousand, really. Well done, you. Yeah. Very good. All they need to do now is grow. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just brought another trolley load of our young two to three year old litre pot size Japanese maples to put in our little retail tunnels. We're getting a bit low at the moment. Um, we're quite low on a few sizes as we've not obviously potted anything much on as we're about 10 weeks behind. Uh, Sophie's been doing really well though. She's potted loads of the little seven centimetre ones. But yeah, this is the Aces putting on their second flush of growth. There's uh, Benny Kamachi there, Shinda Shoujo there, tied in with the Ariadne. Uh, there's Orange Dream, Butterfly, Siriu, there's Benny Otaki. Um, what else have we got? Blood Good. Yeah, so there's lots of different ones there. And they put on this really pretty second flush of growth which is the colour that their new growth is in the spring. But they usually tend to grow away again around July time. And uh, so they look really pretty again. Yeah. Need to pull those big weeds out first. <laughs> well, this tunnel's full up now. This is all Sophie's hard work. Sophie is uh, Matthew. Laura and Alice's sister. She does all our potting. She's been doing this since she was unfurloughed, so she's been working really hard. She pots over a thousand a day at the moment, so we don't actually need a potting machine because we've got a Sophie. All the little red and green pot liners. There's a few larch at the back there. But, uh, these are gonna be sitting there rooting round and then as soon as they're about 
nine inches high. We sell them and they go off to various places. Uh, just the person. So, what? Do, do you mind, what, pardon? <laughs> do you mind just standing by that green, little green dissectum so that I can get my camera? Right, yeah, I'm a little bit taller than you, so that should, should be okay. So thank you very much. You hiding? <laughs> ah, who's that? Oh yes, I think that's Matthew. <laughs> I'm having a morning off grafting this morning because we're getting a bit low in our little retail tunnel of the uh, young haces. Uh, these are actually seedling deceptums. We very rarely get seedling deceptums because most of them come up with the normal palmatum leaf. So we're quite lucky to have a few of these, which they're very pretty. They'll all uh, grow, weep over like the other deceptums. So we're just loading up and uh, hopefully, I'll be done today and then I can get back grafting tomorrow. It's nice, it's too nice to be sat in the shed today anyway. Where's my bucket bomb? Too nice to be sat in there. So nice bit of breeze and sunshine. So all's well. It'll be full up for tomorrow. If it's too hot, we may not get customers in, but uh, if it's if it's probably like this, it'll be nice when you come in. Yeah. You got to speak loudly. Sorry? I'm filming you. Oh, wait. With your clipboard. Oh, I don't know what the phone is. Come on. It's more natural if it's um, not thought what about. What if I just stand there looking very blank? <laughs> I can't yeah. see what to say. This is the tunnel we were in, was it a fortnight ago now? Now full with 21,600 Japanese maples. So if you fill the path up, we've got an extra 2,000 just by filling the path up. And all the monkey puzzles are in here now. Our carriers, there's 3,900 in total. He's counted every one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we've already moved into the other tunnel. There's 2,000 potted in that one, plus a block purely for our own use of 5,800. Oh, dragonfly. So since the world got Get him out to in a minute. almost normal, we've potted nearly 30,000 plants. What? Since Sophie's been back? Yep. Bloody hell. Nearly 30,000. That's good. Have a break soon. Nearly 20 to go. One of Maggie's favourite pastimes this time of year. Actually, it's a bit early for them, but is she goes blackberry picking. She really enjoys the blackberries, don't you, Megs? Like this one here, look. Only pick the black shiny ones, because they'll be sour. Here, look. There you go. Oh, you do like those, don't you? There's a good girl. There's Lots of big ones there, look. Get the big ones. I can't clear all the weeds away because otherwise Maggie wouldn't have any blackberries to eat. That's our excuse anyway. Would you like to explain what you're doing, Elizabeth? I'm shuffling up. The <laughs> um, Hemicalis. Because we have a lot down here and not a lot up here, so I'm just having a bit of a rejig so everything looks nice and full. Are you okay. finding there's a lot of gaps? Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe not the Hemicalis. But no. when does that like being very nice? Oh. They look really well as well, but they might flower. 
They might sell them some flour. I hope so. There are some in flower down there and them buggers aren't moving. You can't no. kill them. I just don't understand why they're not more popular. I know it's a daylily. I each... think maybe daylily could take off. Yeah. Because it sounds like they might only flower for a day. Well, they do. But like... There's a lot of flowers. We'll have to have a look at some of them when they're flowering. Oh my God. I'm trying to have a reasonable conversation and all you're doing is bringing it down to bottom gags. Oh yeah, well, we've been well taught. <laughs> we have, we've had a good teacher. This is nice, isn't it? It'll look nice when it's established. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's a calamagrostis. I've never really over damn. It's just such a a lovely seed head. Mm, nice colour, innit? Yeah, I think it goes nice in the autumn as well, the foliage. Yeah, they haven't sold well this year, have they? No, it's funny. The grasses, because they flew out. I know, one year you sell loads of something, so you bulk it all up, and then the next year you don't sell a bugger, and you've got hundreds well, of them. it's like the pub. We have a steak week and a chicken week, and the next week it's curry and paella. Grasses, you can go as big as you want with the pots, so it's not. I'll show you yeah. something I like, and I'm going to take a picture of it for lighting. I need to Thomas. Yeah, now I lovely like lovely clear variegation. Yeah, the ground elder. Come on, tell me its Latin name. Go on. Agopodium. Yeah, agopodium. I will show you it on the ground, but there's a bit of weed, so I'd have to ignore them a bit. It doesn't spread like the big one. It'll grow anywhere, it'll grow in quite decent shade. And yeah. that white will really lighten up an area. I think ground elder got brought as a vegetable, didn't it, to eat? Yeah. I don't know what part of it you eat. Well, I don't know. Um, I, I feel like I'm being led through the bushes. <laughs> You'll have to excuse the weeds in a fairly yeah, well, we But that's it, that's been there in the 25 years I've been here. That's that, that clump has got no bigger. I mean, it's going this way a bit, but I've dug it up and it digs up easily. I dug uh, them plants are there, we just. Yeah. But it's ever such a bright white. It's nice, it's nice. It gives a nice little. For a really tough, shady, I expect it would do yeah. a dry, would it? There's a dead rhododendron, it's under there. And a great big beach tree. Well, it will tree. be dry because of the beach, yeah. isn't it? I, I think people shouldn't be so sniffy about it. I need dry shade plants. It's Yeah. Apart from this thing that'll grow anyway. What's that? It's geranium. Oh, that geranium. Is it, is it Endrosii? One of them, I think. It thrives in this position. Mm. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit boring. The flowers are nice. All the time, but if you didn't know it, it'd be quite nice. Yeah. You do get everywhere. <laughs> yeah. The seed heads on the cranes bills are quite interesting. They they come down in there. See, there's like a a bill. You can tell. Sometimes it's hard to see whether the because we cut them back. Yeah. It's hard to see whether they've been or gone. Yeah. But you can see the bit because they stick their tongues out. I always yeah. think. Yeah. The seeds actually flick out. You know, they 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 sort of Hello. curl. Can't find one here to do. Because there's cranes bill. There's the seed. These are cranes bill, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Erodium's heron bill. Is it? I yeah. didn't know that. And pelagonium's another bill. But I can't remember which one. But it's all reference to the right. The pointy bit. Oh, I'm amazed. You're not amazed you knew that, but the fact that I've not heard that before. This is the old Astrantias. <laughs> see, now you're just accused of the same snobbery that, that you've... That's because I see them everywhere and they won't grow my garden. <laughs> um. <laughs> right, now we've got two for one nibbage here. Because I'm going to show you, this is Alcamilla erythropoda. It's just a little dwarf form of ladies' mantle. Grows at, well, as you can see, it's much, much smaller than typical Alcamilla mollis and is 
It doesn't seem to seed itself about as well, but it is as easy to propagate. So again, I'll just take the shoulder off these plants, then I'll just stick my hands and get it and just part it somewhere down the middle. Just roughly comes apart quite easily. I'm just putting these up in little bunches. You can see there how it just sort of comes apart easily. Take a load of this old compost off. And all I'll do is some of these oldest leaves, I'll just strip them off some of the tired, most tired leaves and leave that just like that. I'm normally sticking these if I get a little bit like that, I'll stick them in like two in a pot. Just because it's not the sort of plant we don't want hundreds of. But we want a decent number because it is it's a cheery little thing, isn't it, Lisa? Yeah, I'm getting a smile behind the camera. That that's Lisa's signal of approval. It's as close as you get to words. Yeah, there's a little dwarf potentilla, the sink foil. I believe this one is potentilla vernonana, but I'm fair, I think when I was looking it up, it's actually got a different name, a different species name now. So all I'm doing is just tidy it up, all the old leaves and all the old flower heads. And then, much like the alcamilla, but I might, I need a bit of a hand with this one because some of the potentillas, they can be divided, but they don't divide as easily. They just don't part as simply as a lot of things because a lot of them they seem to be quite almost woody in a way. You can see there how the sort of have these great big stretches of growth that just come from the middle that haven't actually got any root. But then, I find a bit like that. I find it's a bit like when I'm dividing things like the chamomile. It all sort of has a clump that sort of almost like radiates out from one little piece that has rooted. But again, these should work to tie them up the best I can. Because you can see the age. individual piece there, how the sort of just only have a tiny little bit of root at the bottom coming out of one piece and I think it's the same for a lot of the larger herb herbaceous potentillas too that they, they don't they're a bit of a tricky thing to divide right down but these ones they need to be done because we don't want to take them into any bigger pot really because the idea is that they are a little rockery sort of plant and there we go, that's another nice little clump there actually. That one's worked quite well and with both of them I'm just going to take them quite small, the alchemy and the potent are just into square sevens so that next come spring we can just pop them into one litres to be a nice little plant for someone's rockery again. And it's one of these alchemy, it's one of those plants I'll never ever forget and uh, whenever I hear the name, it will remind me of one moment. Have you ever seen the programme V Releaser on ITV? Yes. Well, there was a moment because it's Brenda, Blender, Br it Brenda Bletton playing someone from the northeast, and there's this moment where there's a dead corpse on the moor, and she gets a pen and turns over someone's coat and just like, Yeah, I'm in Miller Morris. Who were that? It only grows in certain parts of the moor. Find where it's at. And I'll never ever forget rules? that moment. Ah, yeah. Do you have any rules? What are you lurking in the bushes for? This is a very nice plant that self-seeds extensively in our gardens. Um, Campanula lactiflora, milky bellflower. You can see here there's a few different seed types. So there's this kind of off-white, which is, sounds horrid, but actually it's quite effective. A blue, and there's, well, there's white. There's a pink somewhere. Do you know what pink? There's another big patch here, which probably shows it off a bit better. It's rather eating like a tiny uh, and a random row. But it's lovely and wafty, and no. the bees like it. Ignore the dead rhododendron. Mm -hmm. um, we have a fail, Thomas has probably made it quite well a few years ago. I nib it. We didn't think it might work because it's, it's quite woody, isn't it? 
Yeah, but my um, magic hands get it to work. <laughs> but Thomas did his miracle of life. Um, <laughs> you can, if you want, if you don't want, it's quite as tall, which is all right in a big garden like this, but if you have a smaller garden, you can Chelsea chop it in wherever Chelsea is, I think it's the start of June. Just cut it about in half and it'll make it a lot bushier and a bit more manageable. It depends on the effect you want. But you wouldn't get the extremes in height and you get a later flowering. So as you can see, we've got a variety of lovely colours, including this Allium Cernum, also known as Lady's Leak, with the purple and uh, the white coming out um, at the flowers. Like a bit like a leak, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, Lovely I guess it's called plants. Lady's Leek because it's elegant and delicate. Mm -hmm. It's just ended up being an unfortunate name because it can apply to a lady who's had a fair few kids. Anyhow. And also the Crocosmia Lucifer. It's so that bright red, very vibrant um, colour. The flowers, I absolutely love Crocosmias. Lovely late summer colour. Yeah, some people don't like it because Lucifer can be a bit thuggish, but to be honest, it's that lovely in flower. Who cares? This is Cephalaria. It's gigantic, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes called the giant scabious because the flower looks very much like a scabious. It's a very big bugger. It's ready, we had quite a go at this, didn't we? Yeah. And it's, um, but you can see from the effect here, it is quite effective. Effect is effective. <laughs> it has that lovely, like, loose, natural feel. Very impactful. Yeah, and you can see all the bees on it. Um, that kind of airy feel, so you could, Ooh. while it's big, you could get away with it in a small garden and you could have something quite decent where I'm stood. Mm. There is nothing really decent here. And you meant to say airy field, and it wasn't northern just dropping the H, was it? Airy field. Is that no, airy? No, they're not very airy, actually. Um, Another one of those plants that name it sounds like an STD, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's a flower. Yeah. Much as I'm not the biggest fan, I must say that thing's looking pretty nice. Physocarpus. Yeah. It does yeah. make a good I think I remember someone asking on a video actually to see if we can name them the Physocarpus. I think that one there, it'll probably be a Diablo, that it's one. Older one yeah. That's an older variety that's a bit lighter. And the one down through the hedge there will probably be Midnight. They're two of the older Physocarpus varieties, yeah, and Midnight is a very dark one. This is another funny thing. Waving. <laughs> Maclea. Another spready bastard. Um, it never looks good in a pot. One of them. Um, but it is quite effective. These ladies have like bluey idea to them. The flowers aren't much to look at, but in a the, in a big border, hmm. it's quite effective. It, it add an effect, wouldn't it? You'd yeah. see it in a magazine, and you'd be a bit like, ew. Yeah. In a lot of big gardens you have it planted for instance it's a cheap way to fill them but it does a, it does a good job it's not a typical flower thing but you might call it ar architectural that lovely word i have a a job to do and it's a job i've been quite looking forward to doing i just need to get a This is exciting. So we are going to pick these peas. They are completely full now. Um, in fact, they're probably beyond how I would like them. But they're all right. Most people 
like the smell of um, tomatoes. And they're very evocative of gardens of childhood and maybe working with your grandfather or uncle or somebody. They always used to grow tomatoes in their greenhouses. And it's, it's a lovely feeling to be growing things that remind you of such things. Picking peas is another one. Most of us of my age would have picked peas and helped pod them when we were younger. And people grew far more of their food then. Though how many of them actually got into the bowl was another matter. These are nice plants. These are leucanthemums that used to be the Shasta daisy. It's a, a range of goldy coloured ones like goldfinch or this one over here which is um, banana cream. It starts to be difficult to be able to tell the difference to be honest but I suppose there's subtle differences. This is old Esther Reed. Of course these plants are in pots so you just get an indication but in the open ground, they are so much better. These are three nice delphiniums. These are just young plants that were given to me. Um, and uh, they're, they're wonderful. One is uh, an obvious improvement on butterball. This one is very, very dark. And that is, well, pretty standard blue, but uh, it's still quite nice. But those two, and they, they, they seem to go together quite well, that sort of, I don't know what to call it. Plums and cream or something, or I don't know, damsons and cream. Yeah. Nice. This is a lovely holly. No, holly? The ivy. I don't know about holly, yeah, all right. Like does. the song, Holly in the Ivy. Um, <laughs> Which Thomas would think has been vastly improved by this growing through it. It's a um, tropiolium. Do you know which one it is? I think this tropiolium speciosum. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, um, I don't care. It's it, a bit naughty. It climbs and it twines. It's horrible. It climbs, it twines. It takes over a bit. It can be a bit like invasive. But it's very, very pretty. And the, the ivy doesn't come to any harm because it's an ivy, you can do anything to it. Uh, the buzzers like it. And we actually managed to propagate some last year. I've got to say, actually, I might be wrong. The tropiolum species officer might be the red one because I've seen the red flowered one growing through stuff, and that does look quite really nice. nice. It's like post box red. And you often see it in quite old gardens going through like you. And the red against the dark green is really effective. I thought we used to have some, but I don't need to hear anymore. But I might imagine that. I might just thought this was it. The red's more in demand, but this is hard to get hold of because it's a bugger to propagate. Um, when this had all died back in winter, there was lots of little seedlings or suckers I went without the bottom, and I managed to get a few. I don't know. Did you chuck some out? Was there some that didn't pay? Yeah, some did die, I yeah, think, sure. but still, we've got more to live than we ever have before. Yeah, I think it was timing, kind of. Lovely little beast. <laughs> bird shit plant. Of course, it does look as bird shitty this year. Yeah, Malcolm might have filmed the actinidia already, but yeah, look at that. Usually the whites, that's, it's more like here. Yeah. And it looks like a bird's been eating a lot, but she's saying because my gloves off. <laughs> and usually it looks like a bird's had a lot of berries and shat on it from a great height, but it's really nice. It's quite looking like a bird shit. Um, yeah, oh, someone has, yeah, Malcolm will have been selling them, won't he? No, they're, they're worth the same. So we managed, you can see, I probably shoved a few different ones in. Yeah, look at that. Now, to be fair, they won't sell them because no, now look, they'll die before long. If we try to keep them any longer. They, they don't like it in pots. 
that's not they're better off yeah being bunged in the ground and letting look after themselves yeah it's some a lot of things are like that which is why we've had trouble with it before there's our favorite plant if you like that plant seek help this little beast has been hiding behind the door from malcolm he keeps on trying to kill it i don't know why this is not what the greenhouses are for. <laughs> That's for growing peppers and tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it, it put on those lovely big seed things, which are scattering all the gravel and come back with revenge. I, I don't know what it is or where it's come from, but it comes back every year in here, which is a fairly warm glass house. Fairly warm for, for an unheated glass house although we do have heat in the spring but a lot of the winter it'll be um cold just freezing here if it's cold enough actually it freezes in here quite easily um but i think it's, it looks almost like a campus but i don't think it is um, it's just very pretty bladder like flowers I think it suffered a bit with having the door slammed on it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just hide it, although Malcolm will see it in the video. So these are some of our maples. Um, we grew them, well, we grew these from seedlings um, two years ago, which have now grown quite tall. And I've just been weeding all of these little babies. very yeah. healthy can you remember when you potted them in the spring clara before they were breaking into bud what we did there were one just great long sand and what we did with them all took the top off just cut them all back to like the last few pairs of leaves and just to make them bush out a bit and it worked quite well hasn't it mm, yeah it has Naughty boy. That's all we have to put up with, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the frames for the uh, delphiniums that we did earlier in the year. Now, these delphiniums all got grazed off by a couple of rabbits we had in, so they're not as big as I would have hoped. However, next year they're going to make fantastic plants now they've grown in. They were just newly planted. This is royal flush. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely cracking thing. And they will be much bigger than that. The campanulas. There is the cornice. Alternifolia. This is another one called Clifford Pink. It's um, just nice to see. The borders this time, as I've explained to you, they have these campanulas in and they have been here for hundreds of years. So this time of the year, you can just walk through and they are absolutely wonderful. They are head high. There's a delphinium amongst them there, Molly Buchanan. But they are six, seven foot tall. Here's another one. And we just allow them to seed around. This is one of the nice things. Look at this one, isn't this beautiful? Deep blue. And they seed around and they come out in all sorts of lovely colors. In the whites. I never tire of them this time of the year. And uh, although it's late summer, the, we are taking on um, quite a lot of colour now. Late summer, what is it? Mid July, it's mid to late summer, isn't it? Midsummer, let's say. Getting ahead of myself. Nothing has been so popular this year as the Cephalarias, the giant scabious. I think we're just about sold out of them now.
there's uh, it's another delphinium called moonbeam beautiful clean white rubecchia and the joe pie weed it's quite dry at the moment so it's doing a bit of wilting but that'll be in flower in another three or four weeks covered with bees I like your friend's dog, um, um, Bramble. Are you filming us? Yeah. <laughs> We're doing something arty in the shrubs. <laughs> Take no notice of him, Phil. He'll go away. Thank you. If you're getting my backside, I'll want to know about it. <laughs> like the colourful ferret's <laughs> bum. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that on tape. <laughs> Thank you. We were just doing this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, I just wondered what you were doing in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you said you've been married done. a long time, but you know, it's a little bit public. <laughs> it's doing what it has to. Right. We have a rose. It's a very old rose. It was when the, the hall was finished in school. And, uh, you didn't attend, one. did you, Michael? I didn't attend, no. No, no you obviously did. <laughs> You have that sort of finishing school voice. I like to think so. Yeah. This is the the rose that we're going to use. It's named after a Mrs. Amelia Balls, and she named it after her daughter, Ophelia. Now, if you think I'm being rude, it is actually true. So what we're looking for is a nice bud, nice fat bud. And there's one there. And where's my knife gone? And we need to just get this. Come on, Pepper, get out of the bloody way. And we're just gonna go down behind the bud. And then I'm gonna take another bud here. There's another nice bud in there. And Go down there. That's a bit better because it's got a nice tail on it. I can hold on to that. And behind you'll find the the sliver of heartwood. We want to try and remove that so that we have the bud, what we call the bud. And that's it. You see, you can hold it there, and it's just the bark with the dormant bud inside now what we need is a rootstock and as i already explained when it went horribly wrong before we're going to get rid of this now these aren't the sort of rows you would normally choose because they are so difficult to work with and um, very very spiky so what we need to do is make a little crossways cut. You see, I'm just going across there, rocking across and making a nice cut. Then we're gonna take our knife and make a downward cut, probably about an inch, inch and a half. And we're gonna just peel back that, that bark. Don't go too mad at it. Just peel it back and then the same the other side. Hope you can see this. You're just peeling it. So you you've it's what's known as a, a tea bud. You can see here we've got a, a bit of bark open there and it's open there. Okay, all the way down. Now we take our bud, okay, this is the, the bud. Our tail is probably a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna cut that off a little bit. And then we're gonna slide it down from the top of the tea, underneath that bark. You can use your knife just to push it down a little bit. See how that's going in there? Use the back of the knife, not the pointy bit. 
different people over there we are that's gone in there nicely now where the tea the top of the tea was just cut off your bud like this and there you can see you've got the bud underneath the tea just going to get rid of that now i'm going to bind this now you can i've got some proprietary bud things here they're just like a, a little piece of uh, a budding patch and we're just going to put that over the top and just twist it round and they stick stick on nicely sound like thomas here now this is doing nicely now just put another one down there and that's that now i'm probably going to take those off in about a week 10 days some people leave them some people just allow the bud to poke through but uh the bud should set within about three to five days and then you can take that off and then in the spring when the bud becomes active you can just cut this back and away there are your rose you've got a vigor of a rosa rugosa with an ophelia rose. so the first thing we need to do is uh, get the bud out so I haven't used this knife for years so we're just going to cut down behind the bud. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. And then we're going to cut up. And we're going to get this out. And behind there is a, a sliver of wood, which we really, really don't want. We just want There's always the way, isn't it? Shall I whistle or something? Yeah, you could whistle a merry song if you want. <laughs> so we'll try another one here. There we go. Sometimes if the roses are too dry, you can't get the wood out from behind the bud. It would have been much more helpful if I'd prepared one earlier yes you're never gonna make blue pizza are you no Ooh. there we go that's the bud but again that's actually too short for what i want so we're we'll try again if you didn't use that you could go up here and do the same again can you see we're coming down? Oh, bollocks. Ah, <laughs> oh, bollocks. Oh, all that work. All that work I for nothing. I shouldn't have let you have a sharp object. I was warned about that. <laughs> it's not going to work now, Mal. No, it's not going to work. Should we just pop out <laughs> and buy one? <laughs> you can't buy one. <laughs> oh, fuck. <sighs> Still, it was fascinating, that. We'll do it again one day, maybe. Go on, piss off, you're like a fucking...